Hello everyone, this is Samuel Zachary here, back at it again. You finally hear my voice for once, we're in 2020. I hope you've been enjoying the videos I've been putting up with, with my new intro and stuff. If you guys don't know recently, I went back to my locals over at Wildlife Nation, there's a gallery guys Tyler, decided to play zombies again, preparing myself for the Anaheim Regionals in April. Now, how do I feel about zombies? They're like the budget kings right now, so... I am just gonna have to explain this deck for you if you guys haven't seen my deck upload, which was like I think July of 2019. I don't remember. And you guys realize I do have a new playmat. And without further ado, let's go ahead and start the deck profile with two copies of the main monster, Doom King Bailedrock. To summon this thing during the standby phase, if there is any field face of field spell in play. You special summon from the graveyard in defense position. That's once per turn. And then whenever a zombie monster activates an effect, etc. during the hand, either negate it or banish a monster from the field or graveyard, which you really do a lot. Well, the main way to get your field spell is two copies of Necroworld Banshee. I like two because one, if it, you basically don't have enough consistency to get the zombie world, if you play three, it's clunky. Two is just the right amount. And, well, basically when it's face up, you can also protect your zombie world in, in the field. But usually you want to get it in a graveyard. Just so you can get it. And it's standing really well with this two copies of Gold Bloom. Gold Bloom, when it's sent to the graveyard at all, you can banish it and add a level 5 or higher zombie when you deck to your hand. Or, if zombie world's in play, special summon something like a Doom King. Which, you just, you know, the deck is pretty much like Doom King Turbo. Yeah, you, this is just your, like one of your best starters ever. And to get to your starters, we have six ways to do this on normal slump. Uh, we have plenty of more, but like playing uh, three copies of Shira Nui Solitaire and then three copies of Uni Zombie. Now, Solitaire, you could tribute a zombie, including itself, but I'm a tuner with zero defense. Uni Zombie fits the need. Also, well, Plume fill, feeds in, fills the need for zero defense. You can really like some Unizombie though, because the Unizombie gets to send a zombie from the hand and the deck to the graveyard, both once per turn. So let's say like your opening hand has like either a Banshee, or hold on, uh, let's say you you open one the, one of these two cards, a Banshee or Global Boom in your hand, and you have one of these two in your hand. You could very easily get to your Doom King combo with at least one of the two in your hand and using a solitaire or a unizombie. Also keep in mind unizombie is also a tuner, which does matter with the deck. Next up, we are playing three copies of Mizuki. Now Mizuki, I did was playing it too because I thought three was too clunky. Nowadays I think you're fine playing three. You just really don't want to see it in your hand at all, but like it's okay to see it in your hand at times. Because of Unizombie. Or like you have like other ways to send it to the graveyard and like you have another way of sending it there anyway with three copies of Kazuki, which during the main phase can send a zombie from the deck to the graveyard which typically will be your either your combo pieces which will be Necro Banshee or Gold Bloom or you can also send a Mizuki with it and those are just the main targets. You can also send itself to the graveyard to activate its second effect where you can banish another zombie to special summon the zombie from your hand which does come up a few times and it's really generally useful, and it's also level 4, which is really good for some of our Synchro plays, which I will show later. Next up, I really wish I had two copies to discard, but Jack of is just like so good. You could discard a zombie to special summon it from your hand, and then during your opponent's main phase, you could steal one of their monsters. If you have zombie wouldn't play, you could steal one of their monsters in the graveyard. At the cost of banishing it until the end phase. Like, now, like, stealing monsters in the metagame is like, so good. Really because you're also going to set up your zombies in the graveyard if you need to discard a Mizuki, or if you need to discard a Neverwell Banjo, or you need to discard a Glow Bloom. Like, Jackal Bowl and Vill's the need. It's such a great tool. Yeah, and you can also sell it off Glow Bloom if you really need to. Now, I would be playing two copies if I had it. Now, the only reason I don't have it is because I didn't get a second one up. So Danger Mothman is right there in case. Yeah, you know, free summon, you can also dig your deck, but 
ideally this this Danger Mothman would be a second Jack of Bowen, so this is my suggestion to replace Jack Man Danger Mothman by with a second Jack of Bowen if you have it. I really suggest you do this. Big time. Next up we have one copy of Vampire Frawline. Should be obvious you could play this. One's enough, you don't need two, you don't need three. Because like you don't want to see this hard in your opening hand like too often. Whenever a zombie monster occurs an attack or or what, no, whenever a monster occurs an attack, you can special summon it and then whenever a zombie battles, you can pay up to three thousand life points to increase your monster's attack by a hundred per life point you paid. Actually, I had to pay 3,000 life points one time over a Boral Sword Dragon that was 4,500 attack. <laughs> this thing's so good. Like, it's free summon, you can protect your monsters, and you just gain a whole lot of advantage with it. Lastly, for monsters, I play two Ash Blossoms because this seems like one of the more stable hand traps in the metagame right now, you know, with Spirals, uh, Chirking Dinosaurs, Shadals, you know, anything that likes to search. Ash Blossom really enjoys thriving under it. And also, I should mention this cop because combos with Doom King as well, because you activate that Ash Blossom, then you chain the Doom King to either to banish a monster. That combo is just so good. You just really can't pass up playing Ash Blossom. Like I, I don't know if you can play Ghost Ogre or Drolls. I just think Ash Blossom is all you need for zombies, and that's gonna do it for your monsters. Spell cards. Heart and Soul deck, three zombie world. Floodgate, also, it really sets you up. All monsters on the field become zombies. Neither player contributed some in monsters except for zombies. No explanation needed. And this also copies combo super well with a key addition to my deck, three copies of super polymerization. You could discard any cards, any one card, to fusion summon a monster. You have two targets in your extra deck, in my deck at least. And I have no idea why Super Polymerization had three. It really shouldn't. In my opinion, it should be a one copy. Like having three is just like too meta defining. Yeah, I don't know if every deck can play Super Polymerization, but you definitely just why is it at three? It's just so good. Uh, it's just telling myself in case I missed it, you can use your opponent's monsters as using materials face up because it's. Really, you can't pass that up. Next up, we play a bunch of two loves in this deck. We play two copies of Instant Fusion, you know, in case you don't have your combo starters. Try to get the Vampire Sucker or Avenger with Savior as quickly as you can. You play two Twin Twisters for your back row matchups, which does come up a lot. And then finally, combo, like, hand trap breakers, call by the grave. You only need two. Because it's really there for hand traps. Like if you get impermed, you might have to end your turn, which is the bad part about the deck. Unless you like have an out. Yeah, but I apologize for the two loves. You could mess around with the ratios. I just think two of instant fusion and two it twins wizards and two call by the grace are enough. Because you really just you don't want to see too many of them, you also don't want to see not seeing them at all. Like there's a love hate relation with two loves, specifically with this deck. Next up, one copy Foolish Burial. Shouldn't be explained, like you send any monster from your deck to the grave, you already send Necro Banshee, you send Mizuki, Gozuki, Gold Gloom, Doom King Baylor Drock. Like, you really can't pass up playing Foolish Burial. It's so good, it's the reason why it's limited to one, and it's this reason. And now we'll do it for the spells, and for traps I play four. Heart and Soul, Rivalry Warlords. Each player is locked down to one type of monster, and the neat thing about rivalries, like you combo this with Zombie World, they're locked into zombies the rest of the duel. They don't have any way to destroy spell and traps or don't have cosmic cyclones or lightning storms. Like it's just so good, and like blocking out your opponent from summoning is like super key. And one of the main ways you win with this deck. And then finally, this is personal preference for me, but you could cut this. Personally, this card's been working out for me a ton. One copy of Eradicator Epidemic Virus, which only works with Doom King Baylor Drop because it's 2800 attack. The requirement to activate Eradicator is a dark monster with 2500 attack or more. And then you declare out your spell or trap. Every card your opponent has in their hand and field of that declared type is destroyed 
for a minimum of three turns, including every draw card they draw in their hand. This is just personal preference. This thing's super powerful against pendulums, like trap-based decks, spell-based decks. Like you, this card is so powerful when you resolve it. It's like usually when you open it, you should have your combo. And yeah, personally for me, I like to play this, but I don't know what you guys is. Let me know how you feel about Eradicator in the comments. And that's it for the main deck. So yeah, 40 cards. Now the first part of the extra deck, Super Polymerization targets. First part, <laughs> Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon, which you can make with any two zombies with Zombie World in play. And when you, it's a 3,000 attack, any monster you battle with it does not get destroyed. You just steal their attack points. Make a Dark Soul token with the same kind of attack points you stole, and make it betray your master, your, your opponent's master. And then, in case that doesn't happen, yeah, start even Infusion Dragon to steal two Dark type, two Dark attributes, which is brutally painful for most decks. So, yeah, Super Volumization is just busted. Next part's your Instant Fusion targets first. El Shadal Winda. There are, I actually did use this a lot. Like you reborn of uh, Mizuki. When Zombie World's in play, like your opponent just locks down a special summoning except for once, and then the other one being Thousand Eyes Restrict, so that you could steal your opponent's monsters that are like problematic, like Spiral Sleeper or something like that. On those categories, like boss monsters. And you can just steal them, make it your own, and just make a Link Rebo off of it. Next up, Synchro Monsters. Not many decks out feels these days because they don't really prepare for it. You can't be destroyed by Battle of Card Effects, 3000 attack, 3000 defense. And then, for zombie purposes, Red Eye Zombie Necro Dragon. This could be cut by, you know, any of these two could be cut by a Cypher Motor or Mega if you have it. But like, I think you need Zombie Necro just because you don't want to get brutally locked with Gold Boom's effect. And then also you can just steal your opponent's monsters as well, which is really useful. It's level seven; you can make it pretty easily. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. You only wait one XDs, and that's number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. You have to make your opponent's spells, make, and also make this a lightning rod for you whenever your opponent attacks. Like, it's situational to make, but it really is real. It's really good if you get to summon it. Like, you can't just pass this up. But the beauty, and now the beauty of the deck Link Monsters, one copy of Adventure Savior, send your zombies to the graveyard off its effect. You also play one copy of Rare Keyboard Blockers to unbrick your hands by discarding your card. But the second effect does not come up a lot, but it does come up like you add Zombie World from your graveyard to your hand, and then your Zombie World can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects like Necro World Banshee. Semi Boss Monster, Boral Little Dragon. You could replace this Boral Sword if. I really do suggest you have. If you have Boral Sword right over to Boral Load. Boral Load's useful, but I think Boral Sword's much better than Boral Load. Next, and then. Generic stuff, Nightmare of Phoenix, remove back row. Now this would be Unicorn. Replace the Nightmare of Cerberus with Nightmare Unicorn if you have it. Nightmare of Cerberus also works because you get to destroy monsters your opponent has in the main monster zone. Okay. One of your main combo starters is Link Rebo. Really useful. Sending Gold Bloom and Thousand Eyes Restricted to the Graveyard so you can set up your combo plays. And then finally, two copies of Vampire Sucker, one of your main draw tools. And also, one of your main end boards. And yeah, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about this deck. Side deck could be personal preference. I only cited just for specific matchup, Nibiru. And then three Dokorans for the Spiral matchup. Effect Veilers, if I really needed to set up. Shared Ride against Search matchups. The third Twin Twisters if I needed. The Burial in case I really need to reset my plays. Two anti spells for like spell matchups and the red reboot against trap based decks. This is just matchup preference. And that's gonna do it for my deck profile. I went 1 1 1 in my locals. A win against Cyber Dragons. I drew against Invoke Shadows. And I lost to True King Dinosaurs because I bricked. Yeah, I do definitely do. I definitely do think this is like one of the best budget decks in the format. It should not be ignored. If you enjoyed the deck profile, I mean deck profile, excuse me. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content, more content on my channel, and make sure you leave a positive comment or good remarks on the video. I will see you guys next time. I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.